Hey everybody, welcome to the Cripes Cast. I'm your host, Charlie Barons, and this is the podcast where we talk to people for and or from the Midwest, and we are brought to you by Jolly Good Soda. Here's today's episode. <laughs> Folks, welcome back to another episode of the Cripes Cast. I'm joined by Colleen Maraca in this intro. Colleen, how are you? Good, how are you? Doing good. Why do you always laugh at me every time I introduce you? Because I'm just trying to get into the into the the oh i see is that how you get into the thing for the camera is the camera just, throwing you off no no I'm made for camera are you i am why are you you seem nervous that? now no i'm not i'm excited i love a good camera yeah. moment but yeah i just kind of like that gets me into it and then people also can hear me yeah that's true yeah because a smile you can't hear what's with the camera what where can people see us actually Oh, yeah. Filming this. <laughs> if you want to see... I'm asking for myself as well as the audience. <laughs> we're on Spotify now if you are... Well, we've been on Spotify, but we're Spotify video. Uh-huh. And so if you want to see us talking, we're going to have our full full podcast there. And then it's always been on YouTube. Yep. But uh, yeah, Spotify listeners, you get an extra treat if you, you want to watch treat. it. But the intros haven't always been on YouTube. This is new. This is new. Yeah. Do I seem nervous? Well, maybe now I just called you out like a jerk, yeah. you know, and now maybe you're in your head about it. I'm not at all. You don't seem nervous at all. No. Not anymore. Yeah. <laughs> you did initially. In this video? Yeah. Oh. You, when you go back and watch, maybe you'll see it. <laughs> I'm just smiling the entire time getting excited and I have to like, um, it's my way to p- pick up the energy because today it's a gloomy day and I'm exhausted. Yeah, I know. Well, that's good. That's, so that's You can why trick I'm, your brain yeah. into doing it if you smile. <laughs> You can. <laughs> Charlie Barron's is telling a woman to smile. No, 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 no. <laughs> again, here we are again. How many times? I want to do a super cut on this podcast of, of all the, the times. Of times I've done that. You've said that, which I've never said, He's ladies never said and it. gentlemen. Thank you for admitting that. <laughs> Let's watch that be the thing that gets cut out of this intro. Yeah. So anyways, my guests today are David Borey and Langston Kerman, two of them stand-ups, uh, great stand-ups uh, working around the country doing the thing. You can see them do stand-up. But we're uh, primarily actually going to be talking about My Mama Told Me, which is the podcast both of them co-host. It's a podcast within Will Ferrell's Big Money Players Network. Um, very cool podcast. It, it's one that sort of takes a deep dive into the most exciting, groundbreaking, and sometimes problematic black conspiracy theories. Um, and these guys were just a lot of fun to talk to Kelly. Yeah. Do, you, do you enjoy it? You enjoy yeah, it I was on the call and I was um, laughing quite a bit. I think I took it from, yeah, if you're looking on, if you're watching today on YouTube or Spotify, um, it's a little bit wonky. We had some problems. So I was, I was actually on the road when we did this. Yes. You were in LA or I was ski doing trip or some something. work in LA. So it's yeah. been a minute since we've actually re- recorded this episode. Yeah. And so because Charlie had crappy Wi-Fi. He did the most grandpa thing ever, which was record on his iPad uh-huh. in the video. Uh-huh. And then from there... I record the audio on a Zoom <laughs> recorder, which I then deleted over. I deleted it. I literally checked. I asked him... Okay, so Zoom recorder. Yeah, so I asked him the next day. Yeah. Hey, do you have that audio by chance? And you would have thought you would saw have- a ghost. You were like... Oh. <laughs> you were really was like... Was it on oh. that drive? Yeah. Yeah. So then we had that, but then for the longest time, we couldn't find the iPad because... <laughs> also my fault, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I cannot, you know, on this podcast, on this podcast, we talk about um, AI taking over a little bit, which I brought up on the past several podcasts because I actually, I don't know You're- if it's past several. I think this might be the first podcast I brought it up on. Yeah. But I think about that and really I'm so down the rabbit hole with this thing because i am such a broken robot like if they they, i robot was a movie if i were starring in that movie it'd be i broken robot because i just forget stuff i lose stuff half of my day is spent trying to find my keys two types of people would chat gbt be better than you are you smarter than a chat gbt (laughs) that could be a bit are you smarter than a fifth grader and it's are you smarter than a chat yeah 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 oh that's a good show Put it now. You put it out there, though. Now it's on the computer, mm-hmm. and now they take the thing, the words that you just said, and they put it through their system. Now, now it's just everybody's. This idea. is what I came back to work. He comes in this morning, all hopped up on Chat GPT, 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 GPS, Gamma 
fish with a P. <laughs> <laughs> All this, he like comes downstairs into the where the trenches where we work. And the trenches. <laughs> and it's a it's a beautiful it's duplex. Beautiful, beautiful house. But he comes downstairs like hopped up on chat. G- what GPT. GPT? Yeah, just going down a rabbit hole of it. Well, a- as we're trying to edit a video on him, it's stressing me. The I hell was out. trying to I was trying to riff for a sketch. I was trying to get a sketch out of it, but I think I ended up just really getting everybody all concerned <laughs> about their future on <laughs> planet Earth. So that wasn't the intent. Yeah, but, but yeah. So that's, that's what so. If you're watching the video today, though, to circle it back, it's a little bit of a hodgepodge of a thing to yeah know. yeah it's a production but it's looking good hannah says it's coming together well that's nice yes. that's wonderful yes oh i also lost my wallet today i have no idea where my wallet is shoot i mean <laughs> oh. but i lost it last night actually i was at the grocery store okay i had already self-checked out all of my items and you didn't have your wallet. I didn't have my wallet but i did have some cash in my car so I had to go get the so cash. So what you do? Well, Leave I went to get the, the cash, and then I paid for it. I They took it over to customer service. It was a whole production. <laughs> I paid for it, and then I forgot that I lost my wallet until this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie. I know. I know. Oh, my God. I know. I so you'd lose your ass if it wasn't connected to you. Oh, now you sound like my dad. Yeah. Probably. I just, I don't know. I got to get better at at that kind of stuff, not losing things. I'm just always thinking about like several different things. Yeah. I, I don't my, have that processing power. I left AI. I oh, left no. my uh, apartment keys in Chicago with my grandparents. So uh, so you can't say anything to me. Yeah, but I had my spare with my friends. So I figured it out. Okay. But yeah, I felt like a Charlie in that moment. That was when Don't we, make that a Charlie. That was when we got the pool table. Yeah, there is a pool table now, everybody, at Cripes Inc. headquarters. Yep. The um, same pool slash ping pong slash air hockey table that my grandfather made me cry playing ping pong growing up. So, Oh, he made you cry? Yeah. You were that sensitive. Yeah. <laughs> no, he just was really like, he uh, is very Italian. Yeah. And so um, when he would shit talk us in ping pong, it mm-hmm. was very, very intense, but I loved it. it it's, it's a great fond memory. Yeah. And he's great. Um, but he made you cry also. I was the only granddaughter. So all the guys were just ganging up That's on sexist. me. That's sexist. What? Of him? Or th- me of responding you. because he was act- treating me like the rest of the boys? Yeah, he was just treating, he was treating <laughs> You're you trying to quality. do the best sexist card to me and it's not going to work. I know. <laughs> I could double down on it, but yeah, what's the point? Um, anyways. But yeah, so that's what's new with Cripes. We have a new table. Yeah, it is exciting. Well, thanks for hooking that up. Yeah, no problem. You're uh, going to Venmo me for that, right? I saw the request come through. <laughs> I was like, wow, this is interesting. I am not only housing your, you know, the this memento from your childhood. I thought I was being nice on that account, and now I'm paying for it too. Ah. It'll be so much fun, and we'll do a bit for it and call, call it a write off. All right. You know, Chat GPT wouldn't make me pay for. <laughs> <laughs> That was oh, a jackass chat, thing. Chat GPT also wouldn't put up with your bull crap. I know. Chat, <laughs> chat GPT would have fired me. A long time a long ago. Yeah, they've been like, this is a failing proposition for the human <laughs> species or artificial intelligence to flourish. There is not enough brain function going here for me to waste my time. I will go over to you, betcha. <laughs> I will go over to do dad. <laughs> <laughs> Ay, yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Well, uh, a lot of rambling. We, a lot of rambling. Well, so we should get to it, right? We should get to uh, my conversation here. What do you think? Is that right, David? Think, yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, here is my conversation with David Bory and Langston Kerman. All right. So, I, I, yeah, why don't we uh, start with where, where you guys, uh, where are we talking to you both from? You guys, obviously, not in the same place, but uh, <laughs> different, different. <laughs> We live towns. together. We're uh, yeah. we're roommates. Just, and, uh, two two very different rooms. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You you guys got to separate it to keep the working relationship uh, yeah. together. Yeah, that's how the greats did it. That's how Laurel and Hardy did it. So, <laughs> uh, I'm I'm L.A. based, and and Bory is is a Denver man. Mile high till nice. I die. Yeah, nice. So Denver and L.A. Yeah, um, and. 
and how how did you guys uh, meet? Uh, oh, you you got it, you got it. I don't. I he was around. <laughs> I think we got, I think we got to L.A. at the same time as well as a lot of other people. It it would have been sometime in L.A. Just like doing comedy that stuff. It all blurs together after a while. But yeah, some, I think, some, yeah, some I terrible think people, show ask uh that question hoping that there's a more uh glamorous sort of like romantic story behind it and it's truly just we were telling dick jokes in the back of a bar yeah and- it's not <laughs> it's never like we went for the same head of cabbage at a Vons and then like got into a fight. <laughs> it's like not a meat cute at all no not at all although <laughs> you know it's not too late we can we can do that that head of cabbage thing if you want yeah we can we can remake our origin story it's, it's our lives <laughs> so you guys you guys basically met at the mics is that is that fair to say yeah, yeah, I think, well, we were better than Mike's by that point. We were doing yeah. shows. We were doing was, legitimate I was, shows. Uh, I was doing some Mike's. <laughs> well, I was better than Mike's by that point. <laughs> Glory wasn't, but, but, you know, here we are. I never yeah. forgot where I came from. I did yeah. as quickly as I could. <laughs> if, if ever there was a thing that I was like, "Oh, this will not be part of the 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 hero story that I tell," is that I kept doing open mics longer than I should have. Yeah, that is it is the first thing you cut out in comedy. Like, no more open mics is when you're like, "I'm yeah. doing good. I got, I'm, I got, I'm fucking killing it, dog. I got, I I'm paying it. rent. Yeah, I haven't talked to a I, crazy person all week." <laughs> i did i did the uh la open mic thing for a while too so i got you what was um like for our viewers or our listeners who are not familiar with the la open mic scene how would you guys describe it not to spend Bad. more time on that than we have to but you know <laughs> it, it, i i feel like it's something you, you guys clearly want to talk about yeah oh. no, it's our passion <laughs> yeah, no, it's a it's a it's a brutal hellscape from which there is no return. Yeah, I would say I would go so far as to say I think L.A. might have one of the worst open mic scenes of any community I've ever been a part of. Yeah, wow. maybe ever. <laughs> yeah, and they're like, far I, apart. And they're I, far apart. They're all very far apart. They're all horrible. And then it is. Uh, It is like not, I think other cities have a little bit of a quality where like the mics have a feeder system into like opportunities. And that is never the case with the LA open mic scene. (laughs) You are not accessing any greater, there's no paycheck that could be found on the other end of this. It truly is just going into a cafe with a bunch of insane people and hoping that you come out uh, reasonably close to what you were before you went in. Yeah, I, I was never totally sure of the the point of them. Really, I even did the one. <laughs> yeah. I did the. I, like, like, am I trying to see if these jokes work? Because nobody will give you a laugh. Like, you have to literally buy a laugh. In fact, I used to pay, I think, five dollars to do the the fifth wall or is it fourth wall? Do you remember yeah. remember that one at all? I know of it. And I know yeah. that they it's a pay to play, which is also only an LA thing. Yeah, I, yeah. I gotta I gotta pay you to talk to nobody into a microphone. Yeah, <laughs> I I was aware of a few uh pay paid mics in New York, but they at least had a crowd. Like they would like make a point of like, oh, this is sort of like you're paying to do a, essentially a bringer show, but without having to bring people, right. if that yeah. makes sense. But L.A. was like, no, you got to pay. And also uh, nobody will be here. Yeah. Also, well, pay well, who? You just weirdo <laughs> at running the mic? No. Yeah. Yeah, it's well, you pay, and then it's it's not necessarily nobody that'll be there. I mean, nobody will be laughing who's there, but there are <laughs> nine other people, nine other people who also paid five dollars will be there, or eight right, other yeah, people. Exactly. Yeah, no, I don't count them as uh, human beings. I, I'm, I'm more seeking people who aren't uh, willing to validate themselves through five dollar <laughs> increments. But then the people who aren't there, the people who are there who are not comics are just people who like are down to watch a four hour bad show. That's a wild place to come from. Yeah, that's on a, a Tuesday that, as well. 
That's the, maybe the most twisted person in the room. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, you I don't can't care trust if it's good or bad, either. just give it to me. Yeah, I just want to I want to see people pursue their dreams that I know won't come true. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, that's the mm, 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 that's the <laughs> How many how many years were you kind of like in the the scene before you two met each other? Then? Uh, uh I, when did you get to LA? Like 2015, 2016? I'm 2017, I think, is when I arrived, August of 2017. So I started in 2010. So I had been doing comedy probably seven years when I met you. Yeah, same. I, I started in January of 2010, or at least that's that's what I've been documenting it as. Yeah, history will detail a lot of the greats started in 2010. It was a big year. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so we, you, I think about seven years in, and and now look at us. We're we're thirteen years into this thing, and and it's and going still floating, kind of better than it was before. <laughs> <laughs> you sort of met, and you became friends first, and then you decided, like, at, at what point did you decide uh, to do the podcast, and, and where'd the concept come from? That's all, Langston. Uh, yeah, so I I originally was doing the podcast solo for about a year and a half, I would say, I, I think is is maybe correct. And uh and frankly was getting a little uh uh exhausted in the process. It, it's a very fun idea for those who haven't listened. You know, we we talk to black people about conspiracy theories that are specific to the black community. Um, and, and I was, it's an idea I loved very much, but it's hard to do a podcast by yourself, as you well know. And, uh, Bori was one of our first guests. He was like, I think episode number four, three or four. Yeah. Of the, Illuminati. The podcast. We talked about the black <laughs> Illuminati. Yeah. We oh, talked about yeah. the black <laughs> Illuminati and, uh, and Bori even went on to, to claim that there are some white people who might be in the black Illuminati. It was a I mean, very no, fun episode. <laughs> no spoilers. No spoilers. Go back and listen to it. Um, but but that said, when it came to considering the possibility of adding a person, he immediately came to mind because he's hilarious and also uh, was just so fun to to do it with the first go round. So so we pitched it to him, and he was like, "Yeah, I don't, I don't give a shit." And then here we are. That's exactly what I said when I got the email. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He didn't just say that. He, he replied in an email to that. Yeah, documentation yeah. of that. Yeah, it trailed off like that too. I was like, "Yeah, I'm good." Yeah, no, he put a parenthetical that said, <laughs> "This is my tone." <laughs> <laughs> so, with uh, conspiracy theories, we actually have had um, another guest on uh, this podcast talking about conspiracy theories too, not specifically black conspiracy theories, but just in general. And uh, it's kind of fascinating when you like look at sort of what goes into people believing them. It's usually like uh, truth. This is true. This is true. This is true. This is totally false, but we sort of present it as true. And that's kind of where how people fall on to, you know, really going down the rabbit hole with them. Would you guys say that that's um, consistent with the conspiracy theories you have on your show? Or is there something a different element to them? I think I think it's the same in all conspiracy theories where it's that nugget of truth that gets you and then mm -hmm. you start to pull at the pull of the he pull at the hem and the dress falls apart but i think that's what and i think also we're at an all time high for conspiracy theories right now like yeah. yeah i don't mean to be that guy but there's a lot of there's a lot of false information flying around so uh -oh. i think it's like I, Dave, whoa, david's not, running for office no 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 <laughs> 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 David Bory died in the desert eight years ago. Don't worry about what I'm <laughs> on paper doing. No, I, I do think that that's true. I, I think the joy of it, and, and really ours is is really always trying to take a very comedic lens, right? A comedic approach to, to conspiracy theory. But the joy of it is that there are these nuggets of truth that people are buying into in part because they need it, right? Like your life is in a way that requires you to believe or have some faith in in a more sinister or or secret thing happening. And then the game is sort of like using your imagination to see how far you can take that thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a it's a ton of fun. That's for sure. What 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 do you think? Um, 
So you, you just said that you think some people like need that. And do you think that it's, is that like a symptom of, of society today with those getting more and more prevalent or is this something that's like always been with us? I don't I don't I don't know the history. I mean, I'd like to think that people were like, hey, you know, Caesar's really a North African. But <laughs> <laughs> he's a Moor. But I don't. Yeah, I, I, I think it's something that speaks to like humanity in general. I'd like to think it's always been there. Yeah, I, I would say that uh, at any point when someone has something that another person doesn't there, that person who doesn't is probably going to make some theories about like why that person's got an exceptional uh, experience to them. Like, I don't think that, that I think it's louder now because we have the internet and, uh, and we're not getting healthier. Uh, but I certainly don't think that it's, it's like, Oh, conspiracy theories didn't exist in 1945 or whatever the fuck, uh, generation before this. Yeah. I think there's some like America, um, like back in the revolutionary war days, it was kind of all started on some conspiracy about King George, like uh, doing something or, and that's sort of what started the whole breaking off from um, England kind of a thing. I don't yeah. know. I should probably jump into that more. You know, that whole, well, deal? no, I, I, but I do know that like, you know, even if we, we circle back to other periods in, in early Americana, whatever, uh, like there were part of the literal campaign against Abraham Lincoln when he was running for president was his opponent calling him black. Like they, it was like well, part now, of not to give away <laughs> spoiler alerts, but that is true. It is partly kind of true. We've, we've confirmed we've, it. We've unpacked it a little bit on the on the show, but that was like their whole thing was being like, you know, he's a secret black man, and and everybody was like, huh? Well, we didn't know that about old Honest Abe. Yeah, and, why do you think he's so tall? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that's that's actually a good uh, transition. Though, what are your favorite um, conspiracies that you guys have had on the show so far? Oh man, I, I mean, I like anyone that sounds like. Uh, is like sounds like some kind of magic or incantation. So yeah, we had Jessica. Fun. We had Jessica Clemens. Her mo- her grandma had told her that after New Year's, you need to everybody to get out of the house, and a man needs to be the first person to cross the threshold of the mm-hmm. house into New Year's. And it's just so because those things come from so many weird different places. And I love magic. I, yeah. I don't love. I love talking about. <laughs> I love talking about magic. I don't love magic. I think it's. No, I think they're, they're got a bunch of uh, chicken bones sitting in front of him. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I read the tea to leaves. Somebody with. <laughs> I read the tea leaves before this interview. <laughs> I, I I am partial, I guess, to the ones that that hold a little bit of nostalgia in my life. Like uh, Alex English came on uh, a, a while back and talked about Tommy Hilfiger being racist, uh, and the, the 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 secret interview where he claimed he didn't want black people uh, wearing his clothes, and that that held a place in my heart uh, for a long time because I believed it as a boy. So so yeah, you know, I love those. You know, that's one that I, I remember hearing. Uh, that was like a um, a late 90s thing, wasn't it? Yeah. That people were talking about. So where does where did that come from? Oh, he uh, hates blacks. <laughs> 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 it actually, it couldn't be further from the truth, I, I think. Well, that's not true. He probably does hate black people. But it's, it, he never said it out loud. It, it truly, if I'm remembering correctly, came from a fake... Oprah interview, right? Where like they claimed that he went on Oprah and said this thing, but it actually was a um a fake Maya Angelou poem that was like circulating the internet back when like chat rooms were a thing and weird like long emails that people would send each other. But like they were circulating this fake Maya Angelou poem where she references something she quote unquote references Tommy Hill figure saying uh, he didn't want niggas in his clothes. And as it turns out, Maya Angelou did not write that poem and Tommy Hilfiger did not say that thing, but that whatever that poem was circulated enough that everybody bought into it. 
Also, oh, all wow. those primary colors, you were never going to keep us away, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> you tell me this is yellow and reversible? I'm coming. Come on, man. <laughs> Overalls with weird straps? Yeah. I'm yeah. I'm Who are you? you? Snow gear? Some type of goggle? In 98, I'm coming for you. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, how do you guys go about researching all these and like you know you bring guests on obviously it's comedic it's tongue in cheek but what kind of um research do you do and kind of like what's your go to to sort of vet some stuff Langston <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well let's be clear Bory doesn't do a drop of research No 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 he's, he's the he, the man refuses he outright refuses to do the research I'm there for color commentary and soundboard work yeah, he, he, and listen, the soundboard work is great, by the way. Thank you, thank you. I, that is that's a great skill. I I have no complaints with his contribution, but I I wouldn't even qualify what I'm doing as research as mm -hmm. much as it is uh, heavy Google searching uh, and and leaning into bias as quickly as I possibly can. So the yeah. second I get a nugget of something that feels like I can turn it into an argument, I go that way and I I I dig my heels in because it's much more interesting than leaving like a you know uh, a full uh clear story out on the the table right right yeah it's it's more fun to like uh be part of the uh the sort of fact finding problem than kind of like be a, a journalist in it you know it's yeah. like it's way more fun that way you build yeah. the, the the lore I'm I'm of the belief that uh, at the end of every episode we should have made it worse. I don't think yeah. we should have uh, fixed anything. Yeah. Listen, Got we're not it. here to yeah. save your the world for you. No, 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 no. <laughs> and if you came here for that, you're a silly person. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you are. You are a silly Billy, and I I don't know what to do with that. Um, you guys are um, uh, both comedians, obviously. What's your thoughts on have you seen those like ai chatbot things where you can like you know type in like do jokes oh. in the vein of so-and-so and all that uh, chat and gpt you know, or whatever yeah. chat gpt what what do you uh, what do you think about that i think they're taking our jobs <laughs> yeah i know i know the jokes are pretty good it's a yeah, great first it, draft for a joke yeah I, the ai stuff scares the shit out of me if i'm being honest i i truly do and maybe it's, it's uh, Terminator movies and weird Matrix shit, but I, I truly do believe in the possibility of the singularity and and the fact that like we we keep consenting on a regular basis to like you know make our faces in AI and do the fucking uh, the the chats and whatever it is feels like we're truly just idiots uh, walking ourselves to the edge of a cliff. I'm not as cynical as Langston as far as like, I do believe I do I do believe that, but I also believe in man, I believe in recording or whatever. I believe in the spirit of live performance. And I, I don't I don't think that that is a skill that can easily be replicated via the your your technological overlords. They can't do what I do. Yeah. Yeah. Put I them think in the room. What are they gonna do? They're gonna be able to tell that, that guy's got tight ass pants. AI is going to do that? <laughs> no, only I can do that. Yeah, I that stupid shirt. I think to that point, you know, there's now like all these memes and, and weird sort of like clips circulating where like people are able to to uh, AI Joe Biden's voice and Trump's voice and make these weird, silly conversations that they're having. And part of that only works if the real Trump and the real Joe Biden exist if we get a frame of reference from the human version of this i don't think that ai independent of humanity is going to be nearly as charming or funny yeah yeah but it, it it's almost like you know um like the chat gpt or whatever like you got kids in high school sort of relying on that for for papers or whatever and it's not like super perfect now but like uh the fact that it's pretty good now and people are using it so much, it's only going to get better. So it's kind of like we get dumber as the robots get smarter. And, you know, I'd like to start a conspiracy on um, this podcast right now. What year do you think the singularity happens? What year is it? 2045? What year are you is, thinking? This Langston? is taking a 
dark turn. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it, it, I, I just want to go there. You're, you're, you're predicting the singularity. All right, we're in it. We're in it. I, I listen. Yeah. I'm hoping. I'm hopeful that uh, I have a child. She is. She is uh, young. I hope that that she is at least of an age where she's able to to equip herself against it. So so I'm hoping 2050 or later. I think is, is okay. Perfect. Let's go 2050 and up. I'm with that too. I think it's going to be, I think that I'm going to have a good life relatively. I think yeah. my children would be doomed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I think she, <laughs> listen, I want her, I want her to experience as many Lakers games as she can before, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Before the thing kicks in. She's going to have to start like foraging the Baldwin Hills for nuts and berries. Yeah, <laughs> you're going to eat crickets, baby girl. And, and I'm, I'm sorry that's happening to you, but I, I can't stop it. Folks, excuse the interruption, but uh, I just want to shout out Jolly Good Soda. Best gosh darn soda out there. Love me some Jolly Good Sour Power Sensation. Once it hits the old taste buds, it has, um, it has a potluck on my taste buds. It's bringing a little bit of everything. A little bit of everything to the mix, Kelly. In one can? In one can. A potluck on your taste buds. Jolly Good Soda. Pride of Random Lake, Wisconsin. I don't even understand. Like how uh, the potluck pot sounds mm -hmm. like it's a lot of different flavors. Well, is it though? Is it a potluck? Yeah, is bring your own, so it could be. Yeah, but it's also what do you choose from the potluck? So it's really I do one of everything. Choose your because I feel bad if I w didn't take someone's thing. Okay, yeah, that, that was a terrible analogy, but but and. Uh, <laughs> you're doing the yes and you're improving my you're bad so ad. Right. I love it though. You're so right. I love it. You said but like and too. And oh but, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yes and. Yeah. If you bring a variety pack of Jolly Good, yeah. It's a variety of flavors for yes. the potluck. That was it. And now we've created the perfect <laughs> advertisement <laughs> for Jolly, Jolly Good Good's Soda. Like, hi, can we get better ad reads <laughs> yeah. from Charlie? Yeah. Yeah. Well, no. I mean, look, it's all about the saying. It doesn't need to make sense. Jolly Good, ladies and gentlemen, the potluck on your tongue. That sounds weird. I'm I'm a fan of it. Okay. okay. You should pitch it to them. And folks, I also want to tell you a great way to support the podcast is go to cripescast.com, click on the merch section, Colleen, what can they get in the merch section at mantalkmint.com? Well, or cripescast.com. I always say both of them because it's both. we have both horse websites. Piece, same thing. It's horse, okay. She's like, I'm so past that part of this. <laughs> You've done it for a long time now. Uh, even though I'm a Cubs fan, <gasps> we do have a roll out the barrel Ugh. shirt. Did you end up going to the Cubs yeah, game? Yeah, roll out the barrel shirt's right here. Hang on, it's right oh, there. Oh, cool. So um, for Brewers fans, I guess it's. Brew Crew Blue, but it is also kind of Cubby Blue. Do you ever think about that? How Cubby Blue and Brewer Blue are kind of the same? No, one blue is way better than the other. That's Brewer Blue. So yeah, you can Look do roll that. out the barrel. Um, it's also good for like a cleaning the toilet type. Why of would you say that? <laughs> Why would you say that? <laughs> it's a great shirt. Colleen. Go get it. Go ahead. No, you just threw my shirt. That's not cool. But we also have a lot of other shirts. We have Watch Out for Deer merch, yep. which means I love you in the Midwest. We have a cribbage board that we're actually, I came up with a funny idea for um, World Series cribbage. Oh, I can't wait to hear yes. it. Yes. And, um, but yeah, so we have a cribbage board where it's a travel size. So it has like a bottle opener underneath and all the pegs stay in and the cards and it's a great travel thing. I use it with my family. Um, and then we have drink stuff like nice tall high glasses. We have a bunch of different koozies of a bunch of different types of sayings that we have. Tell your folks I says hi in a variety of colors and styles, new hats. All the time we're updating it. So if you go to crepescast.com and click on the merch, you will be redirected to mantalkminute.com. And you can check out all the merch that we have. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. The I Survived the Midwest Goodbye t-shirt. Yeah, there's a ton of fun there's stuff, There's a lot folks. of stuff. Um, uh, bumper stickers, the whole deal. And also you can um, support us by going to patreon.com slash Charlie Barons. You'll get yes, behind you the scenes looks and feels and whatnot. And uh, yeah, a okay. bunch of stuff. Yeah. So with that, should we get back to the Let's pod? Let's get back get to the to crunch 
from a uh, sort of a comedy perspective, again, guys do a lot of different things, not just the podcast. What, what, what sort of your favorite is it's stand up? Is it acting? Is it the podcast? What's, what's your favorite thing uh, that you're doing right now? And, and you know, why is that the case? Mm. Oh, that's a good I, question. I think, you know, you go. No, oh, I don't know. I actually don't know what your answer would be. I, oh, I'm, go ahead. You got it. My, okay. We're, we're so polite. Uh, my, <laughs> <laughs> my answer is that I really love having the options to be able to do a, uh, like a lot of things. I think when you first come into this game, especially as we did as like standups, you tend to see that as being like the be all end all. And that's really easy to get burned out on if you're just doing stand up. But like, now that I'm in a place that I get to do a lot of stuff, that's nothing. I don't like any one thing more than others because it's just nice to have varied. You know what I mean? I like to have. I mean, my parents are immigrants. I got to have a lot of jobs. Yeah. <laughs> I I think, uh, you know, stand up is, is always going to hold like this very specific place in my heart because like Bori's saying, it was the the thing that introduced me to to this whole world of other opportunities. Um, but yeah, I just want to make stuff and and make people laugh and uh, stand up. Oftentimes feeds that beast. But then there's like we did our live show very recently, and that was so much fun and so cool and uh, getting to interact uh, with an audience and and on a stage in a way that isn't just these prepared jokes but truly was just us riffing uh horribly for for an hour and a half felt it felt like the the right game too yeah 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 and uh, you know we've got so many different like uh being sort of like comedians in this uh like in this media landscape i guess it's the cliche way to say it. but there is so much different stuff we're doing and so much can be going well and then other things cannot be doing well. You know, like a, your podcast could be taken off. Your videos could be like down. Like, are you the kind of people that um, look at like sort of the positive? Is your brain looking at like, oh, this is doing great. I'm fine. Or are you always looking for the thing that's like going down and you're like, oh, man. And you're always sort of struggling with it. Or do you not pay much attention to it at all? You're like, there's so much to even uh, care Oh, uh, you're you're asking, are we sick or not? And uh, yeah. you know <laughs> we're sick. I'm, I'm, you know we're sick. That's why we even came guys. over here. I'm I'm trying to compare me right now, you know, and figure out, sure. fi yeah, you know, figure out how screwed I am, you know. Yeah, I I am uh, certainly constantly reflecting on my failures, if that's part of the question. But I will yeah, say, um. I am I am not not celebrating the the fun of what this job is still when I can celebrate it. So I I do I take a lot of uh, a lot of warmth and there's a lot of warmth in my heart for the moments that that work and boy oh boy is there a lot of room in my head for the moments that don't. Yeah, I think that's uh. I think that's exactly it. It's like we're all doom and gloom. We're comedians and whatnot, but it is like. You know, I did used to work at the car wash, so this is all good. Yeah, man. Yeah. I, you know I what taught, I mean, ultimately? <laughs> I taught high school kids. I got cussed out by children. I'm I'm chilling. You know yeah, what I mean? look, at, <laughs> look at your job now. You are yeah. no risk of having to fight like an at-risk team. No. That's good. I, yeah, I don't have to, like, uh, bring you clothes from home because, because parents have failed you, and this is somehow my responsibility now. This is fucking tight. Yeah, that's a good game. I'm glad. I'm glad you guys are bringing this up because uh, one of my favorite questions is um, uh, what's your first job? I mean, I've, I've been like uh, kind of in the same boat a little bit. I've been working since I was like 11 or whatever. And I always, I, I thought it'd be a fun show of like people who have kind of made it go back and work their first job for a little bit and turn that mm. into a show. Like I, I worked at any Ann's pretzels, you know, I always Ooh, thought it'd be fun to go uh. back and roll some pretzels. I mean, not to brag you guys, but I can roll a, a pretty solid pretzel. Okay. No, I believe um, that. Yeah. Did you yeah, make the lemonade you. too? Oh yeah, I made the lemonade. And um, spoiler alert, uh, it just comes in a big old carton. There's nothing special. It's just a big carton of like. But they put lemon. it in that machine that makes it feel like it's been stewing uh, in there. 
<laughs> I know. I know. It has. I don't think you're supposed all. to stay stewing for, for a lemonade. I don't that's think that's. That's it. It's stewing. It's ju- <laughs> the juices have been combined in there. <laughs> there I'm was fine actually, with that, that part, but the stewing, that's rubbing me wrong. I'm gonna be tomato, honest tomato, that. tomato, tomato. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what were your first jobs uh, on that note? You want to go first? Yeah. I, I, my first job, if I'm remembering correctly, was um, uh, why well, there are two sort of answers to this. My mom actually ran a, a home daycare out of our, our crib. And so uh, I was constantly employed and by employed, I mean, working for zero money uh, <laughs> by my mother to be watching other people's children when they were at our house. Got um, you. I truly made no money from her ever once, and uh, and I, I would it was child labor, and I hope to sue her uh, <laughs> once I get the opportunity. But then I also was a basketball camp counselor uh, when I was playing basketball. Our like head coach would like hire you know the the players to basically be like counselors over the summer for like smaller kids. So always working with kids, I think was was the shit before I, I got into any other real jobs. I've never worked nice. with children, but, uh, good for you. <laughs> yeah. I just never gave up. <laughs> yeah. My first, my first job was my neighbor, this guy, Norm, he, I was like 14 and he built houses and he, I would just help him out all summer. And he, you know, he let me drive a truck and stuff like that. And then wow. I was 14. Yeah. It's like way out in the country. Nobody cares. But was and it then, stick shift truck. It was. It was three on the tree, oh. like the old school. The oh, yeah. old school. Yeah, it was three yeah. on the tree. Yeah. And uh, I don't even know what that he, means. What a man you are! I love this. <laughs> <laughs> three on a tree? No, no. <laughs> Please don't those expose were, me like, anymore. Uh, no, I won't. I won't. I won't. I won't. I won't. Those were uh, pickup yes. trucks back when a pickup truck was like a pickup truck. You know, it was like this small thing. You know, now they're like the same. They were like twice as big, but same power as that thing, you know? Yeah, and like huge, huge ca- ca- cabins and stuff like that. No, this was an yeah. old pickup truck. But he just, I basically just did stuff he didn't want to do. Like, I remember one one time we were uh, digging a French drain, and the concrete guys had like over poured the concrete. So I just had to come with a pickaxe and just pickaxe concrete all day. It was like very oh, shitty stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, but that, like, that is. At 14. And then he'd be like, this is good for football. And it'd be like, no, this is digging. <laughs> <laughs> this is terrible yeah. for my sciatica. And tenure. Yeah. yeah, this is never going to come into play. Like, coach isn't going to be like, Bory, do the dig. And now you, you win the big <laughs> yeah. championship game. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the Rocky for high school football, you know? Yeah. yeah. This is, this is, you can't Mr. Miyagi digging into... <laughs> The offensive line, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's not how that works. <laughs> I was defensive line. I'd like to think we're like the jazz of the football field. <laughs> did you, did you, uh, th- I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, take this off the rails. Did you see what Deion Sanders was saying about the defensive line, uh, kids? I, oh, no, what better, did he say? Oh, about stinking? I didn't like that. No, he didn't say that. He said it, it, it's way more horrible, I think, than what you think it is. He he was saying that for quarterbacks, we like a good family. We like a a, a boy that comes from like a good home, stable parents. God uh, damn it, uh, He goes to school and gets good grades. And he said for offensive line, or no, for defensive line, we like a fatherless home. We like oh, we like him to oh we God, like them happened. to be barely that making it. <laughs> is that we want them to barely be piecing it together they need this that he said that's a perfect defensive lineman and the internet is not happy with them Listen. okay let me let me ask you this. was this like something he said like Handedly, and someone caught it on their cell phone, or did he actually say that to the? No, press? this was like in a very professional interview with a microphone <laughs> he's holding. <laughs> oh, God. oh God! This was, oh, this was God, a prepared dude. statement from a a grown man in charge of a lot of boys. Listen, he, <laughs> he's prime, baby. Prime's gonna prime. <laughs> 
the prime's gonna prime. We're asking a lot Dude. of a man who didn't even like to practice is the thing also. Yeah. No, like everybody's yeah. like, he's supposed to be he, remember he didn't practice. Yeah. No, he's he listen, he's not he's not not playing his part. It's just uh I think we keep expecting that when we give him more professional roles, he's gonna change his behavior. No, and that's always, not what Prime does. No, <laughs> no. M- must be the money. That's what Prime does. <laughs> <laughs> Play my Did- music. <laughs> didn't he didn't he just get into a fight too with some other coach like a couple months ago or something i saw he, that video going around. he's going crazy yeah. and and i'm thankful that he's here because he's he's the head coach of the cu buffaloes it's yeah. they're already taxing for tickets but yeah he's going nuts yeah i saw no, he, yeah i saw a video of him show giving will wayne a tour of the locker room and being like <laughs> this is where we're gonna have the dj booth and i was like <laughs> None of these things are football. That doesn't have yeah. anything to do with football. <laughs> and yet somehow you just got promoted. I don't know yeah. how it's happening, but you Why are... is Lil Wayne in Boulder, Colorado? <sighs> it's it's tough, man. Wait, Lacey, you're from Chicago, right? Yeah, I, yeah, fake Chicago for any of your listeners that want to hold me accountable. I'm from Oak Park, Illinois, which is a suburb of Chicago, but but Chicago land area. Got you. Yeah, I'm from fake Milwaukee. I get it. Um, what what like uh, influence? There's so many um, comedic influences in Chicago historically, and obviously this is kind of a Midwest podcast. Like, what um, do you think it is about the Midwest that sort of breeds the kind of comedy that comes out of it? Oh, I, I mean, I, I can speak specifically to the Chicago of it all. I think that Chicago, and I've long said this, Chicago is a city filled with haters. Like it is yeah. at the the <laughs> root of everything that we're we're building there. Uh, it is you know we're third third seed city, and I think we always feel that way and are always sort of like living with this this a little bit of hate on our shoulders. But we're we're not like Boston where we're like mean about it. We're very sweet, but we're gonna talk a lot of shit about everybody, including our own. Uh, and I think that that's the perfect breeding ground for people being funny. Like you really gotta, you really gotta be able to bite back in Chicago, even if it's not uh, straight to a person's face. And I think that you know it just made, I, I got made fun of way too much to to not, uh, <laughs> to not have to figure something out for myself relating to comedy. Yeah, right, right. And wow, it's, what a good um, answer. Yeah, well, Thanks, it really man. was good. Damn, answer. that was. <laughs> That was really, really good. Yeah, we're some hating motherfuckers, man. No, I don't know. I'm, I'm scrambling in my head. Damn. Do you tour the Midwest a lot, David? Oh, yeah. That's like the first. I feel like for most places, especially when you start to get on the road, that's the first places where they'll really give you stuff is the Chicago's and the Omaha's and the Minneapolis's and the, everywhere. It's yeah. like, especially for me coming from the West, because I started in San Francisco and then I was going back and forth from Denver a lot. And it was just no, there was nowhere else to go but the Midwest. So yeah, a lot of a lot of Midwest work, a lot of yeah. Des Moines Funny Bone weekends. Yeah, yeah, I've been there. The, do you do you, you mean the dream? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, doing it up. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you notice anything different playing in the Midwest versus like the coast? Like jokes that will work, types of jokes that will work, types of jokes that won't. I, I not not so much in like my act and the way that I do it. I think the Midwest has a sensibility that I agree with more where it's not everything seems to be a lot more grounded in the Midwest than on the coast. And that's mm-hmm. always kind of like for me, that's the comedy I've always liked and been drawn to is stuff that is silly and dumb and weird, but also very, very grounded. Like I don't I'm not one of these guys. I don't want to watch like a guy in a frog suit do I, I don't like weird shit. And I feel like the Midwest yeah. does not love it either, and I've always appreciated that. Yeah, I think uh, I think you know the Midwest is pretty good about filtering out the the fluff, right? Like it's just right. like, no, we'll we'll let you be weird, but you explain to us why you're like this. Exactly yeah. where it was you like tell me why I'd be in San Francisco and like a guy dressed up as a cherub with like a quiver full of arrows would come to the open mic and people yeah. would be laughing, but it'd be like, he's not doing anything though. Yeah. And we, what he's happened Just at home? being weird. He's <laughs> just <laughs> being weird. Why'd you feel comfortable getting on the train that way? Yes. <laughs> that's insane. You got to explain to us why you did that before yes. you, you get to do those little jokes. I exactly. need the justification. Always exactly. about the justification. Exactly. 
Um, where, where are you guys hoping to, uh, take both your, um, careers individually and then, uh, and then w- with the podcast, like what's, what's the goal for that? Is it, is it the kind of thing where you have sort of a goal mapped out? Do you not, do you kind of take it day to day? I'm sort of in a day to day phase and have been for a couple of years, but I want to see if you, if you guys have a different philosophy on that. Uh, I just want us to be successful enough that we get invited for the uh, celebrity all star game. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's a big win NBA. right there. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. we can even if we're like when we get to do it, nobody knows why we're there, but the NBA knows. That's <laughs> yeah. tight. I'm I'm cool with that. Yeah, I I just want to get to the Rock Nation brunch. Oh, that's I would say that's more successful than I've I've even imagined it. You you're taking oh, really? it a step further. I yeah. think there's no limit for what we could do. Uh, uh yeah. Truthfully, you, you guys inspiring each other in real time here. I yeah. love it. See, this is why you're a great duo, you know? Yeah. It, truthfully though, in short, I would like to I love I think it's like we have a really cool live show. And I think that that's exciting to like keep doing expand yeah. into that, doing some more of that. And then just like, you know, hopefully one of these days get Rihanna on. Oh, if Rihanna yeah. comes and does a show, I will say that we there is a, li- a running list that that uh, that we've been building of like dream guests. And uh, and the one that we've pursued most actively that remains sort of the white whale, at least to me, is Drake's dad. I would love to have Drake's oh, dad on the podcast. Oh, wow. Uh, wow. I love that. <laughs> I, I that that is that I uh, yeah Rihanna or Drake's dad I mean it's it's a no uh no questions asked Drake's dad yeah. would would trump that for sure yeah yeah he would kill um me. with the live show um what what like you know is, what, what sort of are things that people who are doing podcasts like what's the difference from an audience perspective when it's live like are there are there some wild cards with doing it live or is it all gravy I mean, there's definitely wild card. That was the fun of it, right? Yeah. It <laughs> felt like, uh, we talked about this, it felt, it had like a Def Jam quality to it that, yeah. that I don't know that either David or I were expecting. <laughs> like, I, I yeah. we were like, no, we got like a reasonable audience and they were like standing up and throwing stuff. It was, yeah, it was amazing. It was wild. <laughs> so, so I, I loved it and, and frankly can't wait to do more of it, but but I, I definitely don't know that you can you can guess how fanatic your fans are actually going to be until you see them in person. No, not yeah. at all. And we, I mean, we had people coming in from out of state. And like, I also think that we're in a very lucky position as far as I think a lot of times people start in the podcast space but haven't done much in the live event space. Mm-hmm. So it leads to kind of like live podcasts not not being maybe as engaging as you would like them to be. Whereas yeah. we all came from the world of standup. And like, at least during that, the last one, all our guests were live performers as well. So we had this, we were able to create like a really fun, like heightened atmosphere. Yeah. that I think that's a perfect answer. We, we truly, uh, we know what it means to be on stage and perform. And we, we were going to give folks that no matter what the show turned out as. So you know, I don't I don't even know if what we were talking about was interesting, but it was a, a good show. It yeah. Was fun. yeah. Yeah. And and you come in hot um, doing the the uh, everything recorded start to finish as a podcast. Or do you hype it up a little bit, like do some comedy first, warm up the crowd, that kind of thing? No, you just no. hopped in and just we did truly it. did not. <laughs> yeah, we, we went out. out. <laughs> we went out cold, baby. That's yeah, <laughs> there was talk we didn't, even, <laughs> we didn't even play music that matched our personalities. We we truly they were playing <laughs> some, you know, <laughs> Ingrid <laughs> Michaelson and then us. <laughs> yeah, it was it was it was it was a cold open. That's awesome. Um, this is kind of my, my last um, question. We'll wrap it up here, but we got a lot of standups that listen to this podcast and, um, and a lot of them I'm finding out through some recent DMS. They're like new standups. They're new to the game. Like, do you guys have any, um, recommendations for them? Um, you know, a lot, I, someone told me recently, like, how do I start? Do I start with crowd work? Uh, videos because no. they're all looking for like no God, no what? I know That's I was insane. like what yeah just start like not in the deep end but like tied to the bottom of the deep end with a with a concrete block you know yeah just ah. try to write good jokes that you like that's gonna take like five years and then 
right? Like to like to really find what you like to talk about in your voice and like what because like I first when I first started telling jokes, it was like a lot of like what I knew people would want to hear from me. And I think it made for a pretty boring act that would like crush sometimes. But I didn't start having a lot of fun until I started doing telling jokes I wanted to tell about stuff I wanted to talk about. Mm. So I'd say focus on your writing. Crowd work, also shut up. Nobody wants to see new comics do crowd work. I hate to be yeah. that guy. Nobody ever, I don't want to see old comics do crowd work. I'm fucking sick of it. Crowd work's pretty much <laughs> only good when you're in the room. It's true, it's good when you're in the room. I don't want to watch. What, on Instagram? I'm on Instagram for butts and basketball, man. I'm not trying to see your crowd work <laughs> clips. I I have a, a slightly different approach to, to David's, I think, very solid advice. I, I think you should quit. I think uh, if you are a new comedian and you're you're looking to get into the business, don't. Stop. Yeah. Leave to quit. You you don't belong here. And frankly, we don't need you. Seats uh, taken. Comedy <laughs> comedy's filled up and, and you can go back to whatever your office job is as a as a, a more reflective person. Don't do this. And that I think essentially uh outlines who we are as a duo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna sit here and tell you to like chill out and Langston's gonna be like, don't show up. Cause Langston's got this streak in him where deep down he's a villain. He's a very good man and a father and a provider, but he wants to be a villain. So I sometimes want to be a it villain comes so out. bad. Yeah. Yeah. I I can see that. I can see that in you, you know? Yeah, I, I wanna be a real <laughs> stabby, stabby cut boy. You know what I mean? I wanna well, I wanna you, be a bad yeah. guy. Well, you got those villain headphones on right now, you know? Oh, yeah. Nothing says villains like those those big old sound ones. What are those? Sony? Yeah. Are they? I don't know. Mine, mine, mine are Sony's. I have studios. no clue. I just I put on whatever they send me and uh yeah. and I never even check labels <laughs> like a psychopath. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh well thank you guys for coming on. Where where can people find you? You can find me at Langston Kerman on all platforms, Twitter, Instagram. That's pretty much the only two I have. Uh, but you, more importantly, can follow us, uh, uh, in, you know, and in, in, at the podcast, My Mama Told Me. Uh, it's a very funny podcast with Bori and I, and we have YouTube channel, and we have uh, a podcast that we release two episodes a week. It's always fun, always exciting, always provocative, and uh, and we would love to to have you subscribe to our bullshit. Yeah, we're on the Big Money Players Network. That's financed by Will Ferrell. Ever heard oh, of him? Yeah. And you can find me. <laughs> you can find me on Instagram at Cool Guy Jokes eighty seven. I no longer have a Twitter. I was not socially responsible. You lost your privileges. You know, I just, geez, I just couldn't. I just couldn't handle it, man. I, ain't, I, ain't. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to ask this earlier. What is it like being part of uh, Will Ferrell's network? And and sort of what does that mean for people who don't really know what that means? Uh, it's a dream, man. I, I yeah. don't know. It's, me and Will, we play basketball every day. He calls me <laughs> up. He's like, David, you're so funny. And I'm like, I think you're so funny. That's crazy. Uh, I will say that uh, I think I you haven't met him, right? Yeah, I'm I'm the only one of us that has No, has had met I met him, him, I would never have shut the fuck up about it. No, I sure. have not met him. <laughs> I, when I originally pitched this show some three, two and a half, three years ago, uh, I went to an office and and sat down with him and told him about the idea, as well as uh, one of our producers, Hans. And th he was very sweet, unbelievably kind man uh, who was deeply engaged with the the entire idea and and has since been a huge supporter of it. So so I am grateful. That said, the man's never showed up for a single meeting. We we don't <laughs> see him ever. So who knows? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> man thank you guys for coming on this was a lot of fun sorry my video didn't work and uh but i've been looking at both of you you no, both look good, great man. i yeah. want to let you know okay so uh, and listen i'm sure you're gorgeous as well yeah well i'm i'm you know thank you thank you that's kind of <laughs> you to say but uh no um all right well you guys uh you guys be good okay you know i'm blushing okay. over here you can't see it okay but <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, folks, that's it for another episode of the Cripes Cast. Colleen, uh, if folks want to follow David and Langston, where do they go? If you want to follow David, follow him at Cool Guy Jokes 87 on Instagram, and Langston is Langston Kerman. Though you'll see it in the description. We'll write it out for you. Otherwise, you can go to um, their podcast website where it's My Mama Told Me. Uh, let's see. My Mama Told Me at. It's it's moment.co slash my mama told me. Uh huh. And then um, they also have their own websites. If you want to go see them live on tour, they do their own stand up as well. So nice. We'll link everything in the description if you're interested and you really should. They're really great and very funny. And yeah, go check them out. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I'd also like to thank uh, Colleen uh, Maraca and Hannah Milos for. Um, making this uh possible without them i would just be a guy talking to myself in a room uh which i'm going to be doing as soon as this is done so <laughs> anyways thank you guys <laughs> thank you charlie we wouldn't be po it wouldn't be possible without you i almost felt that like that was sincere <laughs> I, almost everybody can see it's genuine i know Wow, you're a good actress. Uh, <laughs> so that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, keep her moving and uh, do watch out for the deer. Okie dokes. Bye bye. So roll out the barrel and get the band brewing. Life's got you down. Just keep her moving. It's on Wisconsin. The Badgers say it's the old Wisconsin Jubilee. You know, sometimes when you're ice fishing, you put your foot into walleye hole and go ass over tea kettle and you think you're done no you gotta keep her moving <laughs>